Lesson 12.4b, Writing an Equation from a Graph. To write an equation from data in a graph, it may be easier to first make a table of values from the ordered pairs of the points in the graph. Then we can look for a pattern in the table by comparing the independent and dependent values to each other. Now we learned about the quadrants of a coordinate plane in video 12.1a, which is linked in this description. I want you to remember that that's 1, that's 2, that's 3, that's 4. They're usually written with Ro Roman numerals. And you can remember which quadrant is which because this is a coordinate plane and the quadrants make the letter C for coordinate. We start here and we come around. So this is the first quadrant, and when only positive values are graphed, a coordinate plane or coordinate grid of quadrant 1 can be used. Gus paid $10 to enter a county fair. He then bought tickets to go on rides. And this graph shows the relationship between the total amount he spent and the amount he spent on rides. We can write ordered pairs from the points. We have we always list the x value first, so we have a 0 and a 10, so that's the first ordered pair. Then we have a 2 and a 12, that's the second ordered pair. We have a 4 and a 14. We have a 6 and a 16, and we have an 8 and an 18. We make a table of values from the ordered pairs to show the total spent in terms of the amount spent on rides. So here we have the total spent and the amount spent on rides. We're going to let R equal the rides money that he spent, and we're going to let T equal the total money spent. We look for a pattern between the R and T values. We have a 0, then a 10. We have a 2, then a 12, a 4, then a 14. Well, the pattern is the total is always $10 more than the rides. This is an additive relationship because it's always plus 10. We'll write an addition equation of T in terms of R. That's the total spent in terms of the amount of the rides, spent on the rides. We have T is equal to R plus 10. And we can substitute values of R and T to see if our equation is true. We can try 12 and 2. 12 is equal to 2 plus 10. Yep. 14 is equal to 4 plus 10. Yes. We know we wrote our equation correctly. We can make a table showing the independent and dependent values in vertical form. When a table of values is in vertical form, we can easily see the ordered pairs. It's telling us 2 pounds of strawberries will make 5 cups of jam. So here's our pounds of strawberry for our x value, and the cups of jam is our y value. We can see if we don't use any strawberries, we won't have any jam. So that's a 0, 0. That's our first ordered pair. If you look at this, here is our ordered pair, and there would be a comma between them, wouldn't there? We have 2 for x and 5 for y. That's our next ordered pair. We have 4 for x, 10 for y. Do you see how it just shows the ordered pairs? 6 for x, 15 for y. 8 for x, 20 for y. And 10 for x, 25 for y. We could keep going because the line would continue upward. And the x values are skipping by 2s and the y values are skipping by 5s. So even if we didn't have this line here to tell us that 12 would be 30, we'd know that it would skip by 2, so that would be a 12, and we know that would skip by 5, and that would be a 30, and we could continue on. That would be a 14, 35, and so on. So now we have our ordered pairs in a table of values. We can write our equation. So here's our ordered pairs in a table of values. So first we look for a pattern between the x and y values. We have a 2 and then a 5, and going from 2 to 5, 3 is added. That would be 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. 
But going from 4 to 10, that's not plus 3. And going from 6 to 15, that's not plus 3. So it's not additive. And we can find if it's multiplicative by using division as an inverse operation. We could do 5 divided by 2. We get 2 and 5 tenths. We do 10 divided by 4. We get 2 and 5 tenths. We do 15 divided by 6. We get 2 and 5 tenths again. So we see this pattern. And knowing that division is an inverse, we can do 2 times 2.5 is equal to 5. And 4 times 2.5 is equal to 10. So we can write a multiplication equation of y is equal to that x value times 2.5. And we can move this 2.5 coefficient to the left of x where it belongs. Our equation is y is equal to 2.5x. So let's try one more example quickly. We see the graph. And when x is 0, y is 0. So that's the first ordered pair. When x is 1, y is 2. That's our next ordered pair. When x is 2, y is 4. And when x is 3, y is 6. We look for a pattern. y is always 2 times whatever x is. We write an equation of y in terms of x. That means we write an equation as y equals something with x. We have y is equal to 2 times x. And we can substitute the x and y values to check if our equation is true. We can use 2 and 1. And 2 is equal to 2 times 1. Yes. We can try using this 4 and that 2. 4 is equal to 2 times 2. Yes. And if we do this one, 6 is equal to 2 times 3. That's true. So we know we have our equation correct. You can try writing your table of values vertically like this to help you see the ordered pairs quickly. We're finished with part two of this lesson. We're going to move on to the last part, 12.4c, graphing an equation. We learned how to write an equation from a graph in this lesson. Now we're going to learn how to draw a graph from looking at an equation. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you'll join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.